of James since 2020. Yeah. Since 2020. Okay. So th thank you for that. And obviously what's important is um, our presentation today. I must tell you, your professor is very naughty. Stop, stop for a while. Uh, just a short introduction. Good morning, Angela, Professor Angela, and uh, to students. Sorry, I, I missed your name. It's not. Mukazi so Mulo. Say it. Mukazi Mulo. Sorry, I do, I do need special training before, <laughs> before you do this. Uh, okay, uh, dear colleagues, it's really nice uh, 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 to meet uh, today, today morning. Uh, anyway, morning, it's uh, real winter, uh, by the way, real winter in Lithuania. Uh, a lot of snow today in rural Lithuania, but uh, never mind. Uh, uh, usually I'm saying our world is continue to rotate, no problem. And we have today uh, Professor Angela James from University of Basulo Natal in uh, Durban in South Africa. Uh, she is uh, really uh, brilliant professor, a good professor, good expert. Enough. In Let us talk. Let us talk. Enough. In different, no, no. In different fields. Uh, previously, she was a teacher in high school, also cluster leader, supervisor, acting head. <laughs> Um, uh, faculty advisor, supervisor, examiner, uh, very, very large competences in different areas. And it's at least it's information publicly available online. Once again, thank you very much uh, for uh, that we have you today. And uh, my students, uh, our group is not so big. Only few students, but they are smart students, really uh, second year, uh, second cycle students, master students, and uh, uh, we are working on our module, educational systems, technologies, and innovations. And uh, as our tradition, we're inviting some uh, professors from different countries to share their ideas, experiences, etc., uh, with my students directly despite online, but anyway, it's really useful and helpful, important um, uh, to be in broader context, not only in, let's say, at our, at our university context. Uh, okay, please, Angela, uh, now it's your time. Yeah, um, okay, thank you so much. Um, I'm trying to see where my PowerPoint is now. This session is not just about us presenting, but it is about you being engaged in the process as well. Um, because when we're thinking about transformative learnings and the SDGs, it does mean that we are going to be exploring what are your understandings and what are your practices with regard to transformative learning. So I'm going to give you like just a minute um, you have a page and a pen in front of you. You don't have to respond, but I would like you to write down what you understand by transformative learning. Um, can you see the slide, Vincentus, yes, and can yes. you hear? Yes, okay. it's correct. Okay, so, so you just got a minute to do that quickly. And, and I think what is very important is that we need to consider as um, future teachers or as teachers in the making or becoming teachers or pre serve you know, whatever word you want to use or whatever terms you want to be using, it's so important that we consider learning besides considering teaching. And um, obviously, if we're thinking about teaching, learning and content, so those are a number of different things that we have to be thinking about. So I'll be quiet for 30 seconds and then we will continue. have to close off that and I'm going to open something else because we are going to we are going to go on a bit of a trip together so let's go on that trip so so essentially what what I want to be sharing with you is 
looking at a, a choir which is the Nlobo Youth Choir which is from South Africa and they went for auditions to America and what was important in these auditions was that these young children came from very impoverished type of settings they came from rural areas and they came from places where there was no potable water in their homes they did not have proper sanitation within their homes either neither did they have proper schooling settings and what was important here was that a number of uh, these learners um, were actually trained by a particular person who was involved in music in South Africa. And this person trained them to become part of the Nlovo Youth Choir. So when they went to, the, went to America and they auditioned on America Got Talent, they won the award. And one of the comments that was made was that they have the, the obviously the judges had never experienced a choir singing as good as this choir actually sang. I would like the students to write down in Glovo Youth Choir and check this out in their own time. You spell it like N-D-L-O-V-U, N-D-L-O-V-U, youth choir and these particular children then stated when they when they heard that they had won at um, america got talent they then said now we can go home and we can make our communities better places and somebody could say so why would young children actually be saying that why is it that it's not the adults who are saying making the communities better? I think what we need to look at within our South African um, context, we, have, we are probably one of the most unequal societies in the world. We have people who are extremely poor, way below the, the uh, bread line, the, the ev everyday bread line of one rand a day. And we have people who are extremely wealthy. We also have an upcoming middle class in South Africa where these particular people have um, been educated and they now have extra earnings. They now work moving to the suburbs, etc. Why am I saying moving to the suburbs? Because before 1994, South Africa was not a democracy. There was apartheid in South Africa, white people lived on their own, colored people on their own, black people on their own, and Indian people on their own. So in South Africa, there are four race groups. And these four race groups were treated differently by the apartheid government. And we need to understand that with 1994 coming into play, a number of changes then took place. So we have the opportunity for the Nlova Youth Choir to go to America to represent the country. But more than that, we have the children saying that they can also bring about changes within their particular communities. And I think that is very significant for who we are as individuals in South Africa and what it means for us to actually have various ways and means of how we can look at our education system and start thinking about how our education system can be transformed. And that's why the title of this presentation is looking at transformative learnings. So when we speak about transformative learnings, it's really about taking our context into account, taking our history into account, taking the social dynamics, the political dynamics, the economic dynamics, all into account. Because education is not a standalone. Education is within a particular context. So now when, when we start thinking about this and we think about our history, um, looking at what we need to work with, it is important that we look at, for example, in, in our thing, we, we have, uh, you're seeing this now, Credo Mutwa, who is one of the African philosophers. And Credo Mutwa has been, he's 
he's now passed on he's passed on probably for the last five or six years and credo mutua was as an african philosopher he was very tied into nature and he always spoke about the importance of us working with mother earth and if you can see this particular slide what we are working with um, maybe i should make it bigger yeah okay can you see that nicely now yes, yes okay is. thank you and and so he speaks about the mother of humanity and africa being the mother of humanity and when we think about um the origin of humankind we we now know that the origin of humankind is found in south africa at the cradle of um mankind or humankind and what's important we used to say mankind and they said uh -uh, uh -uh, watch the gender so now we call it the cradle of humankind and the origin of of what we are looking at in terms of um, humans is at the um at that particular site so when we look at african philosophers we need to start saying so what should our education be like uh, should we only be looking at western science information or should we be also looking at indigenous knowledge and what's important is that within our particular um, curriculum i won't play the video but that's exactly what he looked like credo mutua uh, was really followed by a number of different people. And even when we are teaching about science today, we do integrate the workings and the philosophies of Credo Mutua. So when we're thinking about transformative learnings, we need to understand that the children in our classrooms are not only linked to Western information, they really should be linked to pluralistic knowledge. And pluralistic knowledge is really knowledges from different places from different historical times and really looking at the relevance of these knowledges as well. So as teachers, we need to look at our school students. And therefore, if you're looking at our school students in the South African context, our schooling system is such that the schools are divided into five quintiles, five quintiles. So what is a quintile? If we, if we think about it, quintile one would be a school where the children are from extremely impoverished areas. And that could be that middle picture that you're looking at there. And it ranges from quintile one, where the children do not pay any school fees. Quintile two, no school fees are paid and the government subsidizes those schools extensively. Um, and then we also have, obviously here, quintile, if you look at your top right hand corner, that would be a quintile five. One can clearly see the, the uniforms that these children are wearing. You can look at obviously their faces. There's so much that one could be looking at here. So within our, our schooling system, having five quintiles and having really a disparate um, type of setting where the economies of scale are to the advantage of schools in quintile five, then you can understand that those particular schools are highly resourced. And the quintile one schools are poorly resourced. Even the children, they come from low socioeconomic areas as well. So we in South Africa need to be thinking about transformative learning. How are we working with transformative learning to bring about equity? And when equity is different to equality, those two words are very similar, but they are different. So here we're looking at how are we bringing about equity, the sharing of resources where there is an equitable um, sharing of these resources across the schools. I can tell you, we are now 30 years into independence or democracy, and we still have schools in quintile one that, that do not have proper sanitary systems. And children actually um, 
fall into the big holes that the uh, that serve as the toilets and pass on. So so one is questioning so what has been done all this time. And and this is where we would then have to think about so how do we work with our SDGs? So with transformative learnings, we obviously need to look at global scales. So we look globally and we act locally. So when we look at the global scale and we look at UNESCO and we look at the SDGs, the Sustainable Development Goals, we can clearly see that in our education, um, the goal four, goal two, goal three, goal five, and you can see two, zero hunger, three, good health and well-being, four, quality education, five, gender equality. And so we may go on and I mean climate action number 13 is something that we are all concerned about globally and we all have to look at how are we looking at mitigation um, and adaptation for climate change that is what we are currently experiencing. And, and obviously the last one in terms of number 17 is looking at partnerships um, for the um, various goals that we need to be achieving. So as teachers, SDGs are not just um, statements um, in oblivion or even statements out in the air. They really have impetus in terms of the context and in terms of the education which we are looking at today. So when we are questioning transformative, sorry, transformative learning, we have to consider the information that was shared earlier. What did it mean for you and why? So for the students in the class, you wrote down your own meaning of transformative learning. Now we've had a very short discussion about the context of South Africa historically, currently, educationally, etc. We've looked at indigenous knowledge, we've looked at SDGs, etc. And when we think about transformative learning, I want you to look at that statement that you wrote earlier on and see how you are going to be changing that statement. So I'm going to give you one minute to do that as well. Just one minute and really I do expect you to be writing because part of our learning and consolidating what we think is when we put a pen and we write. So that connection to the cognitive, to our thinking brain and obviously to our hand is a very important coordination. So your minute, you should have started writing already. Okay, okay, I'm not going to check it with you, although it would be wonderful, Vincent, as you know, nowadays, um, I do not do uh, solitary presentations, we have conversations. It should not be one person talks to a whole group, it should be that we have conversations. So I'm going to ask you in future to say conversations. Yeah. Can I get one student to present, please, just to hear how that one student has been thinking? What was the first sentence and what have you written now? Any student, please. Okay, students, so please, something, somebody, uh, some ideas about transformative, transformative learning, transformative learning. Some ideas. Don't not... be shy. We won't. We won't bite you. Okay. Did you get anything there? I, I can see how your professor works with you. He he just talks and talks and talks and talks, and you just sit and listen and listen and listen. If you were open to the way in which we were working, you would have had a response by now. Vincentus, change your style. Okay. So, 
<laughs> so, so this presentation focuses obviously on transformation in an active engagement manner. And, and this is what we, we think about. So how do we engage our learners in the process of learning? And how do we link transformation to those SDGs that we were talking about? Where we're looking at hunger, where we're looking at um, education, etc. And then we need to look at, so how should we be engaging? And in terms of the engagement, there'll be some examples that, that um, we will be looking at. And then Nkazimulo will look at a particular example with regard to the work that she did as an undergraduate student. She's now completed her honors and her honors, you did it two years. No, she did it one year full time. She's completed her honors. And as an undergraduate student working with me, she, she also did a number of engagement sessions as well so let's let's carry on now so when we think about it the call to action for the planet people and prosperity is documented in the SDGs and we know that okay and if you're not too familiar with the SDGs go and look them up because one of the things that we as teachers need to understand is that each of the SDGs have particular actions that one could be taking and linked to the particular context that you are within and when we speak about actions in the form of global meetings there are so many different ways in which actions can take place so here i've given you examples collaborative partnerships community activism and what we need to think about is all these actions should go with some sort of sustainability so it's not a, it's not an event in a moment of time and then within the next week nothing else is happening it's an event which is the beginning of something substantial that is going to be happening and it may take two years for it to actually come into place as ex expansively as you would like it to be at the same time one is persistent one continues well I would say I'm persistent we continue and we ensure not ensure but we look we work towards achieving um, any particular outcomes that we're looking at so, so when we're looking at sustainability and we're looking at COVID-19 that we've all experienced, globally we understand, and I'm quite sure in Lithuania you are experiencing a number of the various things with regard to how it's impacted and maybe I should use the word change, I try not to use the word impact, but how it has changed education in a way and how even now zoom is so freely available so when people say that oh covid was really a bad thing i say uh -uh. covid actually was also something very good um, because if you think about how we relate with one another how we have so much access the wi-fi the internet connection the use of different platforms i mean it's just absolutely phenomenal and therefore the learnings that one is looking at in digital spaces i actually did watch your pre the, the presentation that the former or the past um, person presented i think it was on tuesday on the did ai and digital learning so even within the digital space there are so many opportunities for learnings to take place and learning does not just happen just in a classroom just with the teacher so we really need to look at how these transformative learnings not capture but extend and expand who we are all of us as individuals and the place and the place that we have in this world so how should we engage um, I'm not going to ask you for responses. We're just going to go ahead and we're going to look at different examples. So here's a particular example of service learning. And I use this picture, I think, in a number of different presentations. Um, so here we have two students who have worked in a school, a quintile one school, where it is impoverished. And these learners who are present actually come from child-headed homes let me say that again because it's a foreign it's a very fun, foreign phenomenon in other places of the world child-headed homes what does that mean there are no parents in the home 
It's the elder brothers and sisters who are looking after the younger ones. And so these children are present within this primary school and our two students worked with them to teach them about gardening, to teach them about healthy living. And you can see here that they are part of a program and also to provide them with healthy living structures or objects. For example, a toothbrush. One of the children um, said to one of the students, I have never had a toothbrush in my life. This is the first toothbrush that I have. So, so you know, we think about things that we take for granted. And yet there are children within our particular context here within South Africa who, who appreciate just a face cloth and just a toothbrush. And then there was also a number of groceries that was given to them. Here's another example of an intervention, which is a teacher professional learning program. Um, it's a model of continuous teacher professional development intervention that we have worked with ourselves. And it looks at climate change education where we worked with 40 teachers and we did a whole climate change education program all online during 2021 because obviously it was COVID and we could not have face-to-face -face sessions. We designed the whole program. There were six universities involved here. We designed the whole program for the six universities and the teachers all got engaged in, these in this particular program. And now when we visit the schools that were involved at the one school, which is Butlo Bemfundu, they have an echo club, which is an environmental club with over a hundred learners. They did not have in, an enviro club before the teachers were involved in this program. Once the teachers were involved in this program, they went back to the school and they started an enviro club. They started off with about 20 and I think it was about three months ago, I invited them in September, the 9th of September. I invited them to an, a function that we were having here on campus and they shared that they have over a hundred children now involved in Enviro Club and the children are doing so many different activities. So teachers are really change agents and you can see where the transformative learning can take place with teachers who have and are concerned with being transformed. And I think that is very significant in terms of how we work. Early childhood education. Um, in terms of early childhood education, we're looking at children who are three and four years old and five years old. And here we call them the early childhood practitioners. And here we have grade triple R, grade double R and grade R and then grade one. So here, these particular teachers are learning how to use a laptop. Some of them have never ever used a laptop. They've got cell phones, but here they're using a laptop. I do have the video, but I'm not going to play the video. I will send this PowerPoint to your professor and you can have access to that. And I think what is important here in looking at these teachers, I don't want that video. So you can see here that the teachers in terms of the engagement of the learning, sitting together, discussing, and this is important when we think about transformative learning, where people share the ideas in groups. And then once they share the ideas in groups, they then present it. And the interactive sessions are important for all the learnings that we need to be thinking about. So early childhood education is significant in our context and every single child is expected to be attending an early childhood center. Now, if parents do not have money to pay, that obviously is a big issue. So there are security grants that parents can apply for in order for their children to attend the schooling sessions. Here is about rural agroecology. And here I'm speaking about a farmer who is also a teacher and he works in a very rural area of South Africa. And what's important here is that he has set up with the community in the area in which he lives, which is Tumbu in the Eastern Cape, 
um, and he set up a big, big farm. And this farm really is, if you think about it, it has a whole range of vegetable crops, fruit crops, you name the different types of crops, he has them. Um, I'm not going to go into the link to the um, Facebook. Um, so there's the link and that link will take you to the video which shows the different crops that he actually grows as well. So notice I said he's a teacher, he also is a farmer and we talk about it in terms of agroecology. We do not talk about it just in terms of um, farming as such. He has chickens, he has pigs, he has cattle, he sells eggs, he sells all his vegetables to supermarkets. At the same time, he's also enhancing the community within his area in the growing of various crops as well. So when we learn about transformation and SGD, S, sorry, the SDGs, we also have to think about, so how can it all be extended? So it's at this point that we speak about the service learning that Nkazi Mulo uh, had done with her, her partner when she was a um, fourth year student. So we want to go through that PowerPoint now. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop sharing because um, Kazimulo needs to actually share her one and uh, we'll go through to that. So let me just go sharing. Uh, okay, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, have we got time? It's yes, we've same, got time. Yes, yes, it's the same paradigm, uh, sharing, caring and learning. Polytrinity. Ah. You learned. I taught you well, didn't I? Yes, of course. The but but it starts. No, no. It's learning, sharing, and growing. Okay. Learning, okay. sharing, growing. Okay. Can you see? You're learning all the time. Stick around with me. You'll learn a lot more. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm always naughty. You should know me. <laughs> <laughs> oh my! Uh, possible, okay, possible. I'm looking for, for the my, power. My students uh, have another opinion, another order, not uh, starting from learning, but for example, from in in different segments possible. Oh, okay. So can you see? <laughs> can you see the slides? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Thank you. I will just make it larger and I'm going to stop talking and my beautiful Nonkazumulo will now take over. Thank you, Nonkazumulo. Okay. You have to speak loud and get it. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, so during my fourth year, I and my partner, we engaged in a service learning. Uh, so we provided service learning at a center, at special needs center. Uh, that is situated uh, around here in Deben, Pine Town. Okay, so the center is a hub of is a hub of special needs, and it caters for children with multiple disabilities such as cerebral palsy and develop developmental disorders, often with cognitive difficulties and sensory impairments such as visual impairment and linkly or no speech. Okay, so the center provide the children with a nurturing and stimulating environment and the children receive appropriate and effective educational intervention that ensures optimum development. Okay, but our focus, we focused on children who live with autism and spectrum disorder. Okay, so I need to ask next slide. Next slide. Okay. okay, so autism spectrum disorder in short it's asd so it is a developmental disability that causes significant social communication and behavioral challenges um but uh i must say that there is often nothing wrong or to worry about uh about people who live with asd looks that set them apart from other people but they may communicate interact and behave like in different way. Okay, so the learning, thinking and problem solving abilities of people with ASD can range from gifted to sever severely challenged. I got this. Okay, yeah, going straight to it. 
Okay, so the purpose of this uh, service learning was to explore and enhance pragmatic progressive learning while meeting the societal needs. So we accumulated as much knowledge as we could about autism spectrum disorder while providing our service learning in the special needs center. Okay, so um, okay, so while we were there in that center, we wanted like to engage and learn how these people live so that we can raise our awareness in local high school. Okay. okay. Uh, so looking back from our communities of which are uh, rural areas so we decided to provide this service learning while doing a research about asd okay because we felt the need to develop an awareness about this disorder in local schools specifically primary schools because we believe that it is where child development is initiated and it is where different abilities of children are dictated Okay. What are their understandings? Okay, so as I've said, I've as I've mentioned before, that it's in rural areas where we wanted to raise awareness, uh, because uh, in rural areas, as Prof explained the quantiles earlier, so in in let me say in deep rural areas, so if a child is having this disorder the parents as well as the primary school teachers they cannot detect that this child has asd so as soon as they see that this child has a problem they may think that maybe she he or she is abused or okay they can even say it's something that needs to be sorted by sangomas because our african communities believe more in sangomas or they'll say it's witchcraft with the child. <laughs> yeah, so it's situated with something which witchcraft. Yeah, they don't look at it as much as they should do. But in urban areas, that is where you can find these special needs schools where they cater for these children with ASD. Whereas in our rural areas, they cannot see. They just take the child, put it in a in normal primary school, and they they even find it difficult to adapt and even to communicate with normal children so they end up dropping out mostly okay so yeah. so that's about you now talk about your your understandings what did you learn okay at first i did not have a clearly understanding about asd not that i did not have a, I did not know anything about asd until i went there to that center and i spent about a week mm -hmm. yeah engaging with them going from class to class looking at how different children live okay uh -huh. okay okay so when we were there we learned how like they communicate because some of them they cannot speak but they like they do signs so we wanted to engage them and we did like activities with them we did these paintings we also did the gardens with them we planted like spinach carrots cabbage parrots, oh. prof. yeah we did garden and these things so yeah i don't know will this video maybe it will play let's see can you see it Yes, it's it's so. Yes, you can see. When we hear a certain call, when the words must come together as one, there are people dying, and it's time to lend a hand to life, the greatest gift of. And uh, just one question, uh, was it uh, like uh, internship or, or school practice or something different for, for you? Sorry? Uh, was it uh, uh, a special school practice or just uh, it was involved in your research activity? I mean, this visit to school. Visit, yeah. Visit, let's, 
it it was it was involved in their service learning which was part of their research and service learning that they did in their undergraduate module it was not part of the practicum which is what all teachers would do this is added extra okay can we carry on playing the video or must we go on to another slide oh sorry okay so there's the findings for question two so how can we as the pre service as how can we as the pre-service teachers develop an awareness about autism okay so through observation and interviews so we went uh to local primary schools and observed and we asked teachers how they can identify children with ASD and to my surprise they had no idea even what ASD is about in rural areas yeah mm -hmm. okay so we also confirmed that idea that we had about ASD was true however there are many other behavioral signs that are shown by autistic children which were not which we were not aware of even the teachers that proved that not all the autistic children they behave the same so we decided to write an article about autism for our campus to tell them more about autism and that article i wrote uh prof published it in university the university in newspaper. newspaper yeah okay and and then obviously that's that was the questionnaire that was given to the teachers that they had developed and you can clearly see from the responses that they've given um, that the, uh, sorry, it's not my presentation, <laughs> it's Kazimulo, but that's me, I take over, but no, let me step back. Um, so, so obviously that's um, what their findings that they had, okay? Then what did you do once you had those findings? Okay, so after we got the findings, through the observations and questionnaires. So we were able to see that the majority of teachers in primary school do not have uh, much information about autism. Uh, we continued with our presentation with the aim of raising awareness about autism. And we also shared our experience that we gained in a special needs center that we visited. So moreover, our presentation was more focused on providing the teachers with information about autism and information that is going to help them in future in the diagnosis of signs and symptoms of autism among learners in their classroom. Okay, so the teacher also asked the questions. Yeah, and we were able to answer them. Yeah, <laughs> I think Nkazimulo is getting a bit... <laughs> <laughs> you see, it's important that our students get engaged. And you see, part of our transformative learning is engaging our students in these particular processes. So, um, Lamanaskas, I hope that you're going to get your students to be presenting to, to us as well. Um, soon, soon. So, maybe in the next, um, yeah, in January, February. Okay. okay. So, so, yeah. Mkazi Mulu, finish off. Okay, so in conclusion, <clears throat> we concluded that more, more rural people need to be eye-opened about uh, the ASD so that they can help the community in terms of instilling knowledge about ASD to, to parents so that the children with developmental disorder can get help at an early age and be able to get the education they, they deserve. And we also suggested that uh, they must be like professionals who come in the schools from time to time, like to check those kind of situations. Thank you. Yeah, okay. So so uh, quite clearly then you can see that in terms of what we're looking at here, um, it's, it's important that we consider who it is that we are working with. And um, in transformative learnings, we, we really need to look at um, if you are given a picture you have to think about not one person's opinion or one person's interpretation of that picture, but what are everybody, everybody in the group, what are the different interpretations with regard to that picture? And why is it that people have those interpretations? So the, the question of why is, is really significant in terms of the transformative learnings. Um, and in, if we're looking at science education and if we're looking at foundation phase as well, 
particularly with our young children. We have to look at the engagement of young children extensively in their learnings. Can young children tell stories? Can young children write stories? Can they make their own books? You know, and, and one of the issues that we have in South Africa is literacy and it's literacies. So when we speak about literacies, obviously it's, it's not just the language, the reading and the writing, but it's also going to be, for example, the drama, the poetry, etc. So one of the things that we do is we actually get our students to make synquates. What is a synquain? C-I-N-Q-U-A-I-N. It's a short poem of about five lines. Every single learner in the class can write that. Do we get our children to go out and to observe the sun, for example, at a particular time of the day? What's the position of the sun? Can they draw that? At another time of the day, what's the position of the sun? In the afternoon, you know, and, and we start thinking about, so these investigative practices that children engage in, do they only start when they are in grade um, five, grade six, or when they're in grade 10? Should it start when they are in grade triple R? Should it start when they're even one year old, even before one year old? So we have to think about how music, drama, whether it's literacies that we're looking at reading different storybooks, we can get our children to make musical instruments. So one of the things that we are presently doing every Saturday from nine, I will stop just now, every Saturday from nine o'clock to about 12 o'clock, we are working with early childhood practitioners people who are not fully qualified so we we have this program they come in and we are teaching them about creativity how do we integrate creativity in our teaching or our engagement with young learners and you'll be surprised how some of the teachers are saying I haven't even thought about that. Now, what we are also working with is the fact that the program has to be in Isi Zulu. Why? Because a lot of these um, early childhood practitioners um, are not very fluent in English. So if we are offering a program or presenting a program in English, it's going to go over their heads. So what we have is in the program, we have somebody teaching in English and somebody who is then interpreting in Isi Zulu. And it is amazing how the teachers are opening up to this particular experience. So we really need to think not just about people who are teaching children who are at the end stages of their schooling. What are we doing with our learning and teaching for children who are one, two, three, and four years old. And that is very significant. And the work that Nkazumulo was, was sharing with you, those some of those children are six, seven, and eight years old. But she knows in the community that she comes from that the children who have ASD are locked in a room because they the, the public mustn't see them. They're actually an embarrassment for the family. And she, in, in her reflection, because after the whole service learning, I sit with them and they have to do a reflection. Her reflection was, yes, we did that with the teachers. Now I also know how I can work with the community I come from to educate them more about children with ASD and the fact that these children are children, just that they are different and they can be educated. And I think we can stop at that point. Do you want to say anything else, Nkazamulo? <laughs> I think she's had enough. <laughs> okay. Um, I don't know if that's what you were expecting, but transformative learnings is what we need to be thinking about. And we, we certainly need to think about how differently our education needs to be. That must take into account the various aspects uh, with regard to how we work and how we actually, uh, sorry, stop presenting. How, how we work together and 
remember that it's in collaboration and how we get our children to also be part of what is it that we need to be teaching them. So co-create. Yes, we have a curriculum. At the same time, how do we sit with our children to decide what it is that we should be working with as well? Or should it be something that somebody else tells us that we need to do? Okay. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Professor Angela and uh, her student, non Kazimula, possible Ireland. Ah, you said it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, I am learning quite quickly. Non Kazimula. Uh, it's, it's requires a lot of efforts to, 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 to learn. <laughs> okay, but never mind. <laughs> Uh, uh, thanks a lot because it's really a short time and it's not possible to uh, to catch all the concepts uh, related to transformative learning. Uh, but uh, as usual, I have uh, some questions and possible uh, we will share some uh, some ideas. Uh, if I understand well, transformative learning uh, has some different different styles. Uh, for example. It can be, as in your case, community-based learning, or as you included, service learning, and for example, collaborative learning, with somehow like different styles of transformative learning, of transformation, uh, etc. cetera. Um, and uh, does, uh, my question is, does learning uh, belong to transformative learning? Because in this case, transformative learning is larger concept. Yes, yes. Okay, so, so I would say if, you, if you're looking at it, one is thinking about the fact that we want to transform the learning. I think that's the most significant aspect. So really, we do not want to be looking at people having a solitary type of engagement with the teacher as the knower of everything and the children as the, the tabula rasas. So, so they're the empty, the empty heads. It's about how we need to think about learning and teaching in a different way. And therefore, when we think about transformative learning, it's not just the content, it's not just the strategies, but it's also about the context of who are we working with and why are we working with those particular groups of people. So yes, I mean, there are so many theories linked to transformative learning. Um, you know that I don't work directly with theory. I, I prefer to look at, so what is the action and what are the various aspects that we need to take into account when we're working with transformative learning? So really engaging activities with it's uh, like uh, like a process of making the meanings of one's one's experience. Absolutely, and and I think that's that's the beauty of transformative learning, and that's why I said you could have a picture, and how one person sees that picture may be different to the way somebody else sees it. What we really need to unpack is how have you seen it why have you seen it that way how did you come to see it so differently and i think that's what we need to think about okay i see in the chat one question i will try to translate quickly uh it would be interesting can to you know see both what... of us your message says yes. you can't see both of us yes now it's okay uh, the question is, uh, uh, what is the percentage of children ha who have uh, this uh, spectrum, uh, autism spectrum disorder? What is percentage in general in, in, in South Africa? More or less approximately number. Yeah. So, so, so we had a presentation by somebody who runs a school in the Durban North area, and they were saying it's about between 1.5 to 2%. And it actually is increasing. And there is, uh, there is a teacher who is an early childhood uh, teacher. And she said to me, I think it was probably about six months ago, I went to her school and she said, I have no idea, but our children who, are, who have autism have just been, it's just shooting up. So, so it's, it's alarming. 
And it's one, it's, it's a particular thing that the educationists now need to focus on. And they're also looking at um, what is the medical field doing with regard to this and also the social workers as well. So it's, it's really an issue that, that has to be focused on. And uh, next, uh, what about uh, what about the support? Uh, what about support for uh, for such type of children uh, uh, from educational professionals or or, or some do some support? Mm -hmm. Support because, from educational professionals. Yeah, because usually we have, let's yeah. say, a teacher or kindergarten teacher. Doesn't matter, primary yes. school teacher. Uh, yes. Let's say as a as the main so, actor of so, educational process. Okay. So, so I, I some, can some, say some additional professionals like I don't know social workers, uh, yes, psychologists, yes. Uh, etc. Yes. So 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 I can say that um, in terms of looking, um, as I said, the teacher. They work with the social worker, they work with people at the hospital itself, so they look at medication for the children too, because some of the children are extremely hyperactive, and you would have noticed in that video, the one child, I mean, I was at that school, that child, woo, you couldn't keep that child still, he was... <laughs> And, and that's what they did at that special needs school to say, okay, that child, if he wants to be on the trampoline the whole time, leave him on the trampoline. But at some point, we've got to take him and put him into a structured type of setting where he needs to hold crayons, he needs to draw, he needs to be able to verbalize what he's experiencing, etc. So, I mean, in terms of the support, yes, the more people are becoming uh, aware of it, the more people um, are being educated and informed about it. So then are they um, coming together to look at how they are working with the resources for the betterment of the community and the children as well. And uh, in addition uh, to the same question, uh, do you have uh, uh, full-time positions for such professionals? Um, yes, yes. So at that school that Nkazamulo spoke about, a special needs, it's a special needs school. And all the children there have a particular, um, um, I would say, lifestyle. I'm going to say that. Um, and what is important is that the teachers are specialized. And in each class, how many children were in each class that when you saw it? Only few, maybe five. Five. Only five children in each class. And, and she went in and she observed in the different settings how many children were present. So you could say, I mean, one of the things, uh, uh, Vincentus, you could say, but how is this linked to science education? It is science. Because if you think about our brain, if you think about our muscular, because some of them have muscular dystrophy as well, and they're in wheelchairs, and they have aids which help them to raise their hand and to be able to feed themselves. Um, definitely, and that, that's what we try to work, not try to work with, that's what we work with with even our science education students. Because science cannot be the narrow content that we work with. We also look at the expansive nature of lifestyles and types of behaviors of different people as well so science is a living it's a living and growing subject and how do we treat it that way it's not just in a textbook uh, uh, okay thank you and if you understand uh, well uh, um, let's say not so many teachers know uh, knows enough about about such disorder or let's say where familiarity with, with such a problem uh, is not uh, at appropriate level possible. Yes. Um, so, so as as Nkazumulo was saying, in in many of the urban areas, and and not just urban areas, some of the rural areas as well. But it depends on on if there is a special needs school present in the area. Then they are familiar with that, and they will work with that. In our programs in teacher education, the students actually take. Um, programs, there are modules, there are subjects where they take special needs education, which is part of education studies uh, or prop studs. Yeah, I think it was introduced the new B ed. The new B ed, in yes. 2019, yeah. In 2019. So, so yes, our students are also going through that because if you think about 
autism. I can remember when I was doing my honours, I will not tell you when I did my honours, that will, you'll know how old I am, I don't want you to know that. But when I did my honours, I, for one of my projects, I looked at autism. And, and at that time, nobody was looking at autism in South Africa. And that was one of my major projects that I did for um, my research in my honours. And I did a BSc honours, so it was a science, a science degree with honours in psychology and biology. Okay. And, uh, in addition, uh, do you have to, or in South Africa, do you have any resources or teaching resources, teaching learning resources adapted to such type of children? Yes. Yes, and and I think that's what um, Kazumulo saw at the school. Don't you want to talk? Why am I talking? You must talk. <laughs> no, like there was this one child who was like, his hands can't focus. They were like moving, like, but there is a computer that he can use that he can actually like put his finger and touch the, the part. The key. Yeah, the key that he wants to touch. Like it was amazing. So, so it was a good learning experience for her as well because she knew nothing about it. <laughs> okay, but uh, you mentioned uh, that, uh, uh, let's say, specific type or separate type of school for students with special needs. But what about regular schools and about inclusive education? Yeah, okay. So, so yes, there is the policy of inclusive education. At the same time, we have to think about our schooling context. If you've got 30 children up to 40 to 50 children in a class, 50 in a class, and you have a child with um, special needs, how do you work with that child? We do not have assistant teachers, although last year there, were, there was a program where assistant teachers were being employed into the schools. Um, I can remember that I was in Germany at Brem at um, Bremlin, uh, yeah, at, at a school in Bremlin. And one of the things that I was so fascinated by was that for every special needs child in the class, there was someone sitting next to that child. So I was in a class with the teacher and three other people that were with that particular child, not in our context. And, and I think we are still getting there and we definitely will get there. Um, and that's the whole understanding of transformative learnings. The more we learn about phenomena, the more we, we know and learn about them, we share it, and then we also look at, so how can we embrace and enhance the children's learning by using the different devices, processes, approaches, etc. Okay. Uh, students, possible more questions uh, or some comments or reflections? I think they, they're happy. Yeah, <laughs> start. Uh, no. uh -huh. they, are, they already raised some questions in the training language. I tried to, to transform, to translate quickly, but uh, okay, but uh, let's say some not traditional, I don't like this term traditional, but typical question. Uh, we have different, different learning teaching theories and uh, how not to be locked in such amount of different theories. <laughs> it's as you as you mentioned that from it, it really depends on context. On, on 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 country context on on different circumstances on environment etc cetera, etc cetera. but but i could i could say i mean in your context i was teaching when i was there on the 26th of september um no sorry of um, october um i was teaching there and um, one of the things that that i was what, what what came across from the students that i was teaching they said you have such a different style of teaching our, our lecturer doesn't teach like that because I was, I gave them activities, we discussed what they were sharing, you know. So even in your context, there's transformative learning that one is looking at there as well. So the extent and the nature of it is obviously context, um, I won't say dependent, but it is context related. And it's influenced by context. So, so 
Yeah, and, and I think what, what we need to understand with transformative learnings, if we're looking and if we're linking it to the SDGs, especially with saying no hunger, no poverty, um, there has to be, we're looking at education and the importance of education, then the SDGs already have various outcomes. They have different outcomes, they have actions, they have things that you need to be able to do in order for you to discuss all of this. Okay. Okay, uh, thank you very much. Uh, time has I have to go. covered. No, time I have is to go our... to a management meeting. Yeah, the typical, typical enemy for everybody. For everybody, uh, thank you very much to Professor Angela and her student Non Kazimula. Uh, <laughs> and uh, it was side. really, it was <laughs> learning, sharing, and growing, uh, and uh, possible sharing. Uh, I just want to inform uh, for students that it was. Uh, organized just uh, yesterday and and it was really short time for professor angela to be prepared but uh, as far as i know she is always pre uh, prepared is prepared for, for the work and uh, it's really good and uh, you can trust on your friends and your colleagues good colleagues and, and uh, in order to support in order to let's say uh, learning by sharing yeah by, by experience and, and it's really really good uh, thank you very much um, okay. it's nice that thank south you. africa and lutania uh, both countries are in the, ta in the same time zone uh, just now uh, it's winter time uh, before we had Thanks. summer time and was was one hour difference currently we are in the same time zone it's really good and uh, for us it's really time for coffee break I don't know what is for you. <laughs> Take us to coffee. <laughs> okay, okay, thank you. Uh, uh, have a nice uh, rest of the day. Uh, fruitful, you useful, too. meaningful. And um, uh, we will meet possible in the next, uh, uh, in, in the near future. I don't know, online or not online, synchronous or asynchronous. But, uh, okay. Okay, thank you. Bye-bye. Yeah. Bye-bye. Bye for now. Bye for bye now. Bye-bye. Bye for now. Bye. <laughs>